Hey, it's Garrett. Looks like I'm live now. So uh, for those that join me or watching a replay, I just want to thank you for taking a couple minutes out. Um, one thing I want to do with this group, A Life Unchained, is to continue to provide some value, talk about some things that can help us in recovery and help people that we know, uh, just so that we can always be working to make our recovery better than what it is. Recovery is really, it's, it's not a thing, it's not a destination. You're not, it's not something that you get to and then you don't have to think about or worry about again. It's really much more of a mindset and it's a journey. It's a journey in that it's something that's, that can continue to change and get better. And it's, there's things that we can do to improve that journey, improve our path or improve our, you know, that road that we're traveling. We can continue to get better. We can continue to learn new things. We can continue to go back and revisit some old things that we learned, see how it's working out for us and make some tweaks or bring in some new tools, some new resources. So that's really what I want this group to be about, the Life on Chain group to be about. And one way to do that is just by having conversations with other people. We all go out into the world and we find resources, we find tools, we find things that can help us. And we are, we can be the greatest resource to other people in recovery, but it's only by having conversations, sharing the things that we've learned, the things that have worked well, the things that haven't worked well, that we as individuals and we as a community can grow. So I want to take some time this week and do this three-part series talking about just some basic things that we can do. Sometimes you need to go back to the fundamentals. You need to go back to the basics. You get as, hot, as far as you can with the things that you know, and you can either go out and learn new things or you can go back and revisit some of those fundamentals and make sure that you're maybe improving the way that they're showing up in your life or improving the way that you're engaging in certain things. So this week, I'm going to be doing this three-part series, and we're going to talk about some of those fundamentals. And you might hear some things you never heard of before uh, or some things you never realized or think of things in a new way that you had never looked at them before. But no matter who you are, no matter where you are in your journey in recovery, you're going to learn something that's going to help you. Uh, so one thing about this Facebook Live is it gives us the ability to communicate. So um, if you're joining this now or if you watch a replay, I'd love to see uh, some comments, some thoughts that you have. We'll like to turn this more into a conversation than just a one-way presentation. So anything that you'd like to add, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and, and see maybe what you know or what you've used or what you've seen or things that you've, you know, those aha moments that you've had that have helped you in your journey because maybe by sharing it, it will either help you live more into that in your own life uh, but it's it's likely going to help another person along their path, along their journey. One of the most important things that we start out with is mindset. Getting to uh, the most positive, most empowering place that we can. There's so much that we can take from our past and from the experiences that we've had that can be crippling. It can, it, it can feel shame. It can feel guilt. It can make us question our worth, make us question our abilities to face and overcome challenges in the future. But there's a lot of things that we can do if we choose to look for it and choose to leverage it. There's a lot of things that can bolster our ability or, or bolster our recovery and strengthen our ability to overcome challenges and live more into our true potential in the future. And for me and everything that I've experienced, the people that I've worked with, what this all comes back to is starting with the right mindset. Now, a lot of times we'll go through the mistakes that we've made in the past. We'll think about those things that we wish we wouldn't have done or the lost time that we've had, the lost expenses, you know, the money that we've spent, the, the times that we've, uh, not, that we've not engaged things as well as we could. We think of the, the cost of our friendships, our relationships, the cost of our profession, the cost of our you know, financial well-being. Our, our bias, or we have um, what's referred to as cognitive biases. So our bias to remembering things, too often what we remember are those bad things because these are things that could potentially be a threat to us in the future. So these are the things that we ruminate over. These are the things that we think about when, we, when we're laying in bed awake at night and we can't fall asleep. We're thinking about all the mistakes or all the bad things that we've done. But in reality, there's just as many good things that we've done. There's as many wins as we've had. There's as many strengths and good character traits that we've, uh, that we've shown and that we've uh, embodied in our life. And we can focus our attention and look at those things. That's what we can do. That's what we can use to build a better recovery, to get to a better place now and get to a better place in the future. One thing that's commonly talked about is gratitude. And it's a very simple thing. A lot, of, a lot of people have some kind of gratitude practice in their life. There's many ways that you can bring a gratitude practice into your life. But I don't think it can ever be overstated how important and how, how, how valuable a good gratitude practice is for our life, whether you're in recovery or not, just to live a more enriched life and a more positive life and a more empowered life. If you can found it in 
gratitude, there's so much more that you can do and there's so much more that can strengthen you to be that better version of yourself or live into being that better version of yourself. A couple of reasons that gratitude is such a powerful practice. When we think of things that have threatened us in the past, when we think of our mistakes, when we think of things that could be a threat to our, our present well-being or our present safety, or we think about threats that might come up in the future, all these things have a physiological response in our body that makes us respond with stress. It increases our stress hormones. It puts us in that fight or flight place where we get those cortisol and we get the adrenaline flowing through our body. Unfortunately, what this does in our brain is it kicks off our ability to rationalize, to think clearly, to think creatively, and to work our way through problems, to see opportunities where opportunities are presented. Because when we're in that stress state, we're constantly, we're in that fight or flight mode. We're just trying to survive in this moment. And that's what a lot of life in addiction or life in recovery is about just trying to survive in this moment. But there's so much more to life that we can, uh, that we can engage in when we can think, when we, we can be empowered to think more creatively and more rationally about our situation and the decisions that we want to make. Gratitude is such an, empower, uh, an important and powerful practice because this is one thing that we can do to get us out of that stress state, to reduce that cortisol that's flowing through our, 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 our body and our brain, to re-engage our higher thinking self, our human brain, our ability to rationalize, contextualize, and think clearly about the things that we want to do now and the things that we want to do in the future. There's a lot of, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the times, the habits that we've developed in the past are coping mechanisms to deal with that stress state. That's what a lot of addictions manifest as a coping mechanism to deal with that stress. But we have something, we have a very powerful tool within us that we can use to deal with and to help us cope with those challenging times or those stresses that come up in our life. And that is gratitude. Now, it can, you can use this in so many different ways in your life. Some people like to wake up in the morning and journal about things that they're grateful for. For me, uh, I, I've used it different ways in my life and, and uh, at different times I'll use it in different ways, this idea. Sometimes if I'm just in a stress state or in my panic state, I can stop for a moment and think of things that I'm grateful for. It doesn't have to be something that I do every morning, but if I realize that my that, that stress is starting to flow through my body and my veins and it's starting to increase my anxiety, I can stop for a moment, recondition myself, recage my mind and my thinking to think about those things that I'm grateful for. And it can be a very simple thing, a very simple practice. Right now, I can be grateful for this internet that I have. I can be grateful for the seat that I'm sitting in, this microphone that I can talk into and, and share a message. I can be grateful for Facebook Live and its ability to uh, as a medium for having these conversations and sharing ideas that can that can impact and empower other people. So uh, there's so many things that we can be grateful for in the moment when we look around. A couple obstacles that people face when they're either trying to start or continue a gratitude practice is, I think the first thing is just remembering that it's a tool that you have. It's something that you can fall back on. It's something that you can rely on. The more that you use it, the more it will empower you, the less uh, effect you'll have from those stressors in your life, the more that you've regularly used a, a gratitude practice. But it's also something that you can use in the moment. But one obstacle a lot of people have when they try to engage in a gratitude practice or think of or write down things that they're grateful for is coming up with the right things. A lot of people that are new to it, they think, you know, oh, okay, I want to sit down, I want to write some things I'm grateful for. And they think that they have to have the, the, the greatest things or the um, the most significant things in their life that they better state those you know let me start with god let me start with my family let me start with my health but you can get the same effects of a gratitude practice by thinking about very simple things very basic things you know the shirt that's on my back the food that i had this morning the, the bottle of water that i have next to me these are all things that you can be grateful for and it creates that same physiological response in your body but most importantly it helps bring you back to that place it helps ease those that cortisol that adrenaline in your body and help you uh, kick back on your prefrontal cortex, your higher thinking self, so that you can deal with the moment. You can rationalize. You can understand that you know sometimes those stressors that that create the greatest pain or the greatest anxiety in our life, uh, contextually maybe they're not that significant. Maybe it really feels like it in the moment, but maybe it's not that big of a thing, and it's something that we can work through, or we can find solutions and find resources to help us work through that. So I can never overstate the value of a gratitude practice. If you get nothing else from this video except for that remember that that's a tool that you always have. Now, it's best to use regularly. It's best if you can do, have a daily gratitude practice because again, it helps you, uh, helps open up your perception to some of those resources and opportunities so that when you do face those stresses in your life, you're naturally in a better place. You're conditioned to be in a better place to deal with those and to move forward. 
Uh, I'm thinking about this now. I'm a little casual right now because I'm living, I live in New Bern and we're preparing for what could be another catastrophic hurricane that's, that's potentially heading this way. It's still a couple days out. We don't know where, where exactly it's going to land and how much it will affect us. But, it, but a lot of people are in that stress state because we just very recently had a, uh, you know, last year we faced a, a tragic hurricane and a lot of many lives were, uh, were significantly affected by that. So, of course, a lot of people are, are on edge and we don't know what's, what's coming. As I was thinking about that before I started this presentation, what I was thinking about was, you know, that's, that's really our story in recovery, though, isn't it? Uh, we have things that come up in our life. We have these, you know, there might be things that we know about that are coming in the weeks or the months to come that, that create that stress. And the more that we can do to better prepare ourselves to weather those storms when it comes through. For this hurricane, there's a lot of people that are prepping in different ways by stocking up on water, by stocking up on bread and food, uh, or some people are preparing to evacuate. These are, these are similar to things that we can do in our recovery. We can prepare for when we know things are coming up and we can prepare for those unexpected things that come up. A big way to do that is through gratitude and mindset and thinking about the tools that you do have, thinking about the character strengths that you have developed because of your story in the past. And don't just think about the mistakes that you made because that only disempowers you and makes it harder uh, to react or respond uh, in a more positive way. Uh, as you move forward. Another thing that, that can really affect us and, and that fuels or um, feeds into this mindset is, again, thinking about all those mistakes that we've made, thinking about all the times that we lost something we were trying to, that we were working towards, or we had those failures, we had those setbacks, you know, we didn't give that great presentation that we wanted. We got, uh, we failed to do a project for school or for work, or we had uh, a situation in a relationship that didn't work out the way that we want. These are the things that are most often on our mind and create that stress. But for any of us, no matter how bad your past has been, no matter how many mistakes that you've had in your past, you've also had a number of wins. There's also been a number of times that you've stepped up to the plate and you got it right. And you, you know, you got that hit, you got that home run, you've done things well in your life. These things, unfortunately, as soon as we pass that experience, we often, it goes into our subconscious and we don't think about it again, because that's, because the wins that we've had, the times that we've gotten it right, the times that we've had, uh, that we've exhibited that character or the skills or the talents that we need in that situation, it's not likely to become a threat to us in the future. So our mind kind of discounts that and moves that out of our consciousness and we go back to focusing on those losses that we've had or the times that uh, we have fallen down or done the wrong thing. So one thing that I recommend, one thing I've done in my life, it's been huge for my recovery and one thing that I've helped a lot of other people do is recognize it and purposefully make a list of those times that you've had wins in your life. One of the simplest things that you can do, start out by just making a list of 20 significant wins that you've had in your life. And if you can't think of, you know, if, as you start this practice, if you can't think of things and, you know, go back to the basics, you know, at some point you learn how to walk, at some point you learn how to talk, at some point you learn how to use a computer, learn how to use a smartphone, learn how to use Facebook, created a Facebook profile. There's many things that you've done in your life that are wins. So take some time and write these things down so that you can remind yourself of the strengths that you do have. You can remind yourself of the times that you have gotten it right. Because when you can see your challenges, when you can look toward the future in that context of remembering things that you've gotten right in your life and times that you've done the right thing and, and succeeded in the past, when you remind yourself of that, you can look to the future with that context and it reduces that anxiety that you have about the future. It increases your self of self-esteem and your self-efficacy and your belief in yourself, your confidence that you can overcome challenges in the future. If you only look at those failures, then it's hard to see how you will uh, positively navigate those challenges before you. But when you can look at and remind yourself of those wins that you've had and think in the context of those wins that you've had, this goes a tremendous way to helping you uh, deal more constructively with your current situation and create a better life for yourself uh, in the future and in your recovery. One thing that I do in my practice is I make a list. I have a list of, I think it's 121 wins that I have, and I keep that next to my desk, and I keep it hanging on the wall next to my desk. And it's something that I can look at to remind myself of those times that I have done great things, those wins that I've had, those times that I've uh, exceeded the, the challenges that were posed or that were before me. And when I notice that anxiety start coming up or when I start thinking about and planning for the future and setting goals for the future, I can look at that list. It's always there and I can look at it and it empowers me and it reminds me of those innate strengths that I have. It reminds me of my capability and what I can do. So that's really what I want to talk about in this first uh, in this first part of the series. We'll talk about some other things later in the week on how you can now use this to 
find that path and to create a better life and recovery for yourself. But really it all starts with this. It all starts with mindset, gratitude, and looking at your wins, look, looking at those strengths that you have, because this gives you that clarity or this can help fuel that creativity that you have for how you will navigate the future and how you'll make the most of your life and the most of your recovery in the future. So, uh, so I, I challenge you to do that. No matter what you're doing right now, the, as soon as it's safe and as soon as you can do it, stop and think of a couple things that you're grateful for. List three or five things. It's one thing to say it out loud. It's much more powerful if you write it on paper because then you get to see it, you get to feel it, you get to think it. And that has a much greater impact on, uh, on your physiology and on your, your state of mind. If you can share it with somebody else, then that, that takes it even a step further. So I, a couple challenges for you today, a couple things I want you to do. One, just write a couple things that you're grateful for in the comments, whether you're watching this now or you're watching a replay. Jot a couple things in the comments that you are grateful for. One thing I'm grateful for is that you took time to watch this video and took time to be a part of this conversation and a part of this A Life Unchained community. Another thing I'll ask you to do is, I know that you know somebody that is in recovery, somebody that might need some ideas, might need some inspiration, might need a little bit of support so they can live a better experience in their recovery. So another thing I would like you to do is invite some of those friends that you have so they can be a part of this conversation. They can watch videos like this and find some resources so they can enjoy a better life in recovery. When we take the gratitude that we have and when we use it in some way to support other people or to serve other people, I think of that as active gratitude. Gratitude itself is an emotion that we feel, but when we can use that, it inspires us to action, to doing something that can help another person's life that will be of a benefit to another person, then we're activating that gratitude. We're putting that gratitude into motion. So I challenge you to do that today because it won't just affect you, it will affect somebody else and that will further uh, influence and further remind you of the power that you do have and the, the ways that you can show up, those strengths that you do have. So thanks for checking out this video. I'll be back on Wednesday at the same time in this group. So please invite some other friends that can watch that video on Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern again. Uh, if you're in Eastern North Carolina or anywhere on the East Coast in the United States, uh, I hope you're, you're safe and you're well prepared and uh, be thinking about you and please reach out. If there's anything I can do to help, anything that I can do that might help your recovery or your life or any way I can serve you, please reach out. Thanks for checking out this video. I look forward to your gratitudes in the comments and seeing you and your friends back here on Wednesday.